Now let's look at what it means to function like God. This is what it means, the likeness of God. Now please look up. I used to think the likeness of God means having the form of God. Even though that is true, it does not stop there. So when the Bible says God made man in the likeness of God, God has two hands, man has two hands. God as we know as revealed in Christ has one head, man has one head. Are we together? He walks upon his feet like man walks upon his feet. So there is the form of God. But then the greater implication of being built to function like Christ is that you must have the requisite knowledge. You must know how God works, how God obtains results, how God manifests dominion and then to replicate it in your life. And I want to open your eyes to a few things very quickly. Are you ready? To function like God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created. Everybody say God created. God created. One more time, shout it. Say God created. God created. That means every other person he created is also a creator. Are we together? In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God created. So the Bible says that he created the heavens and he created the earth. That means within everybody, every believer is the ability to change your reality and to change your environment. That there is something within men in functioning like God. You have the liberty to fade away any scenery in your life that is inconsistent with God's blueprint. Are we together? The Bible did not say God explained. He said God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, the Bible says, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. What does this tell you? It means challenges dark days are not unusual. Even God experienced it in his journey to creation. Are we together now? That you are going to face moments that may not be not so good. The Bible says the earth, for whatever reason, was now without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. Lesson number three we learn. Never give up on things because they are not working. You are learning to function like God. When there was darkness, God did not run away. Waiting for someone to create light, then he will come back. The Bible says the Holy Spirit moved upon the face of that darkness. Upon the face of that water. The company is not working. Make it work. Don't run away. Are we together now? Anything that is not working, champions stay until they make it work. Verse 3. The Bible says, and God said. Everybody say, and God said. So we see now that God created. We see that God stayed. Even in the midst of an unfavorable environment. Now the Bible says God said. That means every spirit he created is a talking spirit. That you create realities by speaking. This is how God functions. God functions by saying. He frames realities by saying. The Bible says and God said. He did not discuss the prevalent situation. He just said let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. The Bible says and there was light. Number four, how to function like God. And God saw the power of vision. If you are to function like God, you must have the ability to see. God saw the light, you must see opportunities. God did not see the darkness, even though there was darkness. The Bible says God saw. It matters what you see, not just that you see. It matters what you see. Who is learning now? From verse one to four, I'm showing you how to function like God that God created, that when there was darkness and chaos and anarchy, he did not run away. He stood there and solved that problem and that God spoke. He created man to have capacity to speak and the Bible says God saw. Man can see. God has given every man the power of vision, the ability to see things as they should be. Even if they are good, you can see it better. God saw the light. Listen, you cannot function like God until you know what God has, until you know what God carries, not just who he is. When you talk about who he is, you talk about his nature, but you must know what God has because it also belongs to you in Christ. 
there is no mention in the Bible of God functioning in ignorance. That means in ignorance, the saints cannot function like God. He dwells in the midst of light. He functions from a standpoint of light. He speaks in light. He acts in light. Let me tell you some more how God functions. The Bible says, even God, look up please, who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. That means God does not wait for things to manifest before he calls them. He calls them to manifest. You get up in the morning and with the spirit of vision, you begin to design a life using words. You are functioning like God. Make no mistakes about it. The earth may not be in the hands of believers now. It is clear that believers are not the ones who are possessors. And when I talk about the earth, I don't just talk about the landmass. Are we together? I'm not just talking about the landmass. I'm talking of manipulating the mind control systems too. The earth, believers are not supposed to be victims of policies and a modus operandi that is antichrist. It is because we do not understand how to function like Christ. We have been so reduced to a point where we are victims of anything that comes from anywhere. Unfortunately, Satan went ahead of many believers and he's captured the kings and the gatekeepers of the world. And they continue to manipulate the cosmos to come up with policies and come up with things that are antichrist. We are largely victims. But I believe in Jesus' name that things are changing. Amen. There are some of you here by accessing kingdom influence. God is going to elevate you like Esther. And put you at strategic places. Where you will, you will protect and defend the cause of the kingdom. Who believes what I'm saying? Amen. Refer to my message redefining the coming revival. I teach you there that the coming revival will be beyond pulpits. It will not be the way we have described. It will not just be the campaign of filling stadiums alone. God is going to be raising people strategically and he's going to be keeping them across several places. You will see Esther's in that revival. You will see Daniel's in that revival. It's not only Elijah's you will see. It's not only Paul's that you will see. You will see Gideon's that will arise. You will see Joseph's that will arise. Are we together now? The revival will not come the way we have seen the Welsh and the rest. It will not just be the revival of stadiums and healings and wheelchairs. It will be revivals of changing policies, rising to a point of kingdom influence, where one man can single-handedly protect the cause of Christ across a continent with one policy, one policy, one policy. It is dangerous when we only have Christians in church. It is dangerous for the nation. We must have Christians in the assemblies, in the presidency. Are we together? We must have Christians as CEOs. We must have Christians as policy makers. This is the apostolic model that was left with the church. There was a time the Lord told, the, uh, told Apostle Paul, I think, he said, do not be afraid. I have many people in that city. Your advantage is number. There are many people who are believers. We need vice chancellors who are men who function like God. Are we together now? We need lecturers who are men who function like God. We need chief medical directors who do not just understand medicine and surgery, but have the anointing. They know how to function like God. Are we together now? We need CEOs who are not just intelligent people counting Naira and Kobo and dollars, but people who can defend the cause of Christ. What I teach you now, tomorrow you are in your office. By Sunday, you are excited to return because you've applied it and you've seen it work. Now, coming to church becomes an exciting adventure. What more do I need to learn? I applied this and it worked like fire. I applied the law of honor, functioning like Christ. As a CEO, I redesigned a model and in one week, doors of favor open. Why wouldn't you want to come to church? You would drag all your executives and say, let me tell you, church is not just a place that builds fanatics. It builds intelligent people that the world can apply to nation building. You've, you've heard me. You, you, can, you can literally bring statistics to show that from the time I became a member of this church, look at our productivity. This is the language that will subdue principalities and powers not just blind fanatism it will only work among a few small-minded people but at a macro level it will have no effect on god's program i'm telling you 
to function like Christ. Look at me. When Jesus walked upon the earth, I want you to notice how Jesus did ministry. Number one, he started by doing all kinds of crusades, healing. That means if we are to function like Christ, there must be captured within the church. Are we together now? A people and a platform that allows Christ to be revealed. Do you know what it means to gather 5,000 people aside women and children? It was beyond a crusade. It was a statement that God is alive. It is not all programs that are just for soul winning alone. There are times that there are statements that show the health of the church. That the church is still alive in numbers enough to influence society. Are we together? Number two. We see that Jesus did not shy away from the powers that be. Do you read in the Bible how Jesus interacted with people from an economic standpoint? One person whose economic approach was punishing a lot of people called um, Zacchaeus. Is that not in your Bible? You would think, I hope you know Jesus was not going to his house. Jesus was on his way passing. But when he saw Zacchaeus, he said, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to your house. There must be a space within the church where the purposes of God must be represented in our economic policies. Not just crusades, our economic policies. How about Nicodemus? Nicodemus was an intellectual. He was a doctor of the law. He came to Jesus by night. I hope you know the whole of John 3, 16 was a conversation between Jesus and one intellectual person. We have used it today to save millions of people, but it came as a conversation. There must be a part of the church that relates to the intellectual world. We must know that just because we are anointed, we are not dummies. He's not only a creator, he's the only wise God. Now to the king eternal, he says, the king immortal, the king invincible, he calls him the only wise God. It is in his, he's the fountain of wisdom. Most of the defeats that is in the life of believers is because we have not been trained to function like Christ. There are many dimensions to that function, but I want to give you three to function like Christ. Number one, the very code to function like Christ is given to us there. That man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Who is learning now? That in functioning like Christ, your first assignment is to prioritize the word of God. If you do not know the word of God and you do not have access to the word of God, you cannot function like Christ. Jesus himself said that. Man, any man, a businessman, a man of God, a man as a father, a man as a politician, a man as a professional, a man as a diplomat, a career person, a man as anyone in the fivefold ministry, whoever that person is, if you were to function like Christ, then it will have to go beyond bread. It says you function by respect and engaging every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The word of God becomes the template. Are we together? The basis for everything you do must be with respect to what God said. With respect to what God said. Not with respect to what you feel. Not with respect to what society is saying. The believer's entire Christian experience is with respect to the word of God. Look at this. When God made Adam and Eve, I thought the only thing he gave them was a garden. But the real thing he gave them was his word. Because when Satan came, he didn't bother about the garden. The first place Satan went to was what God said. Satan knows, he has an understanding that if he wants to distort a man and stop that man from functioning like Christ, all he needs to do is to bring you to a point where you do not respect the supremacy of God's word and that you build your life on any other thing minus the word of God. He knows you are defeated. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, still speaking about the word of God. This was Paul praying 
He says, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, listen carefully, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding. Now, when we talk about knowledge in the kingdom, we do not just mean knowledge of secular things. There are three kinds of knowledge a believer needs to excel. Number one, which is the highest, is spiritual knowledge. Spiritual knowledge, the knowledge of the word of God. Number two, intellectual knowledge, the knowledge of the laws that govern the cosmos. The knowledge of the laws that govern the cosmos. Then number three, knowledge as specific to whatever field of endeavor. I'll repeat that again. There are three kinds of knowledge every believer needs to have. Generally speaking, the highest is spiritual knowledge. Knowledge as revealed by the word of God. Number two, the knowledge of the laws of life. This physical world you see has laws and you must know it. There are laws you need to know, else you will fail. Number three, the knowledge in your field now, whether you are a doctor. So if the only thing you know is the knowledge of medicine and surgery, or the knowledge of law, or the knowledge of, um, um, uh, what do you call it now? Engineering, or the knowledge of architecture, you will be limited in life. In as much as you are an intelligent person, you may say. Let me tell you the truth. The knowledge of your field, your field of practice, with respect to the realms of knowledge available is the lowest level of knowledge you can obtain. So don't just say, I'm a graduate. I have masters in business administration. I'm, I, I'm a, a consultant in medicine and surgery. Now, I, I, I appreciate you. With respect to your field, you will do well. But with respect to living, you will live so poorly and so defeated have you seen people who are so intelligent as far as their field of endeavor is concerned but rate them as per their life and destiny is nothing to be desired is because they did not contend for these three realms of knowledge if you don't take the word of god serious in your life i give you a guarantee that eventually you will fail you will not be able to function like christ you will speak but not like god you will move but not like God. You will act, but not like God. You see, the fruit of the Spirit help you to be like Christ. The gifts of the Spirit help you to act like Christ. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. I give you an instance. I have drummed it here in Koinonia. Let's try it again for one last time tonight. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so the power of words it says declare ye that thou mightest be justified how many believers know that if you are to function like god your speaking must be seen as a vital component to your life and your destiny and yet many people do not speak i'm not talking of just jumping and shouting rubbish i'm talking of creating your life with intelligence knowing that god said for him to see so you must say for you to see no weapon fashioned against me will prosper in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare my september must be better than my august my october must be better than my september my november better than october december better than november what is the basis for that speaking that the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth ever brighter more and more unto the perfect day are you learning this now it is true the Bible says he keepeth his bones and none is lost. So you prophesy in the name of Jesus as I sojourn. My body is healthy. My organs are healthy. My body rejects any virus, rejects anything that is not of God. This is true. If you do not learn to function like this, you are not functioning like God. Surely they shall gather, but because their gathering is not of the Lord, they will scatter. They come against me in one way and they flee in seven ways. Hallelujah. I'm showing you how to function like God. When you understand the word of God, now you can engage these three dimensions. One of them is speaking. Speaking. The talking spirit produce other talking spirits who designed their lives with the power of words.
the power of words never allow a day pass without you making declarations of God's word but here's the question if you have not hidden that word in your heart you will have no vocabulary spiritual vocabulary the problem with many believers is not that they do not want to speak is that they are bankrupt of the scriptures they have not hidden their, the scripture enough to declare it there is something for you that no one has touched if you don't know how to call it you can remain where you are are we together greater light how to function like Christ let me tell you the truth ladies and gentlemen walk with the simplicity of this truth and watch what happens in your life listen carefully God is a speaking spirit God is a speaking spirit all believers must be speaking spirits they are speaking spirits and they must function as such number two how do you function like Christ by walking in obedience listen carefully how do you function like Christ by walking in obedience Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus verse 6 quickly please the Bible says who been in the form of God listen carefully taught it not robbery to be equal with God verse 7 the Bible says but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the what likeness of men verse 8 the Bible says being found in fashion as a man I like us to read the remaining part of verse 8 together he humbled himself and became listen nobody is born obedient people become obedient did you get it there nobody is born obedient the psalmist said in iniquity did my mother conceive me obedience is not a gift it is a labor in the spirit you become obedient the bible says he became he became it's a process he became obedient even unto death the death of the cross the prophet of obedience verse 9 the bible says wherefore god had so highly exalted him obedience always leads to exaltation you ask how did jesus rise from the earth to sit on the throne he was not just speaking are you seeing now if the only thing you do is speaking you will get results but you'll be limited the exaltation of jesus went beyond speaking for most believers they believe that the entire scope of functioning like christ is to speak alone i refuse mm -mm. jesus spoke but he went beyond speaking the basis for his exaltation was not speaking the bible does not tell us but many times jesus spoke destroy this temple and i will build it again in three days he spoke but we see that beyond speaking he obeyed what did he obey the principles as consistent with god's desire god's desire was that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin so jesus obeyed even unto death can i tell you the truth in addition to speaking if you must function like christ you must learn the ways of god and obtain grace to obey someone shout obedience one more time say obedience don't be tired you're almost there say obedience obtain grace to speak but obtain grace to obey everybody say obedience obey the laws of the kingdom honor is a law obey it diligence is a law obey it godliness is a law obey it uh, what else again capacity value is a law obey it relationships is a law obey it you will see the result there number one to function like god the word of god must be the basis of everything you do in the kingdom you speak like god to function like god and that your speech must be with respect to the word of god number two you obey consistent with the principles that are hidden in scripture let me give you number three and then we'll prepare to wrap up who has learned today are you ready the third way we function by like god is by sacrifice <laughs> sacrifice yes sir yes sir yes sir if you only talk like god and obey like god and you are afraid of sacrificing like god there is no dominion for you sacrifice obedience unto death there is obedience 
but there is obedience unto death sacrifice psalm 50 verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice did you hear what paul said let no man trouble me for i bear upon my body i didn't just speak the word of god i did not just obey god there are scars as proof of sacrifice the sacrifice of praise the labor of prayer the labor of the word these are sacrifices none of these things are convenient sacrifice a man who speaks to be anointed a man who obeys to be anointed a man who sacrifices to be anointed the difference will be clear very clear are we together now very clear the realm of sacrifice is the realm where any spiritual activity agrees that it is the necessary requirement for attaining certain heights in the spirit whether you practice god forbid occultism or any bad practice there are heights have you heard of people who slept on graveyards because they were looking for power two days three days one week because they are looking for power to get money in business they understand sacrifice let me tell you ladies and gentlemen i hate to sound arrogant but if you fear sacrifice forget greatness forget dominion i've had a busy stretch of the week right from i don't know what day i don't know how many sermons i've preached from wednesday or thursday aside doing a lot of other things i return back now i'm here after service it's not like i'm going home to go and sleep there are still things to be done there are meetings the sound of revival just about a week coming sacrifice you don't carry the anointing on a vessel that craves for convenience sacrifice go and ask any ceo i know you see the jeep that is coming out of you see the beautiful office find out how late they stay to have meetings while you are sleeping sacrifice is the language of champions sacrifice is the language of greatness let me tell you the truth sacrifice at a point in time in your life you will get to a point where sacrifice is no longer circumstantial it literally becomes a realm that you live in that death will walk in you so that life will walk in others it's a mystery but it is true the more you die the more you live the more you are weak the more you become strong i learned this it's a principal law that governs the anointing 